Don't do the crime if you can't do the time is a famous phrase that rings particularly true when you learn about the dire conditions some inmates have to live in. Prisons are no child's play. They are dirty, cold, extremely violent, and unforgiving. Nobody leaves prison the same way they went in, and not necessarily in a good way. From the most inhuman and secretive prison in modern history to a prison in Russia that you won't believe actually still exists, here are the 20 most dangerous prisons in the world. Number 20. Black Dolphin Prison, Russia Despite its rather friendly name, the Black Dolphin Prison is the host of the most horrifying convicts in Russia. Currently, it holds around 700 inmates. Between them all, they have killed over 3,500 people, at least that we know of. The prison is located near the border of Russia with Kazakhstan. It was built in the early 18th century and has been operating since then. Nowadays, the inmates are mainly notorious pedophiles, Chechen terrorists, serial murderers, and cannibals. But this is why no one can escape this prison. Every inmate shares a 50-square-foot cell with another inmate only. Well, to be more precise, they share a cell within a cell, since once the main door is open, they have to go through three other sets of steel doors to get to the living compartments. There are light and motion detectors everywhere, even in the cells, where the prisoners are also constantly being watched 24-7 via security cameras. Also, the guards do rounds and check on every inmate every 15 minutes. The prisoners are allowed only 90 minutes per day out of their cell, during which the guards inspect the cells for prohibited items. The prison yard is actually another cell, and the guards take them there blindfolded and bent so they don't learn the prison's layout. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Arthur Road Jail, India The Mumbai Central Prison is the largest penitentiary in Mumbai. It was built by the British in 1926 on two acres of land in the southern side of Mumbai. Currently, it's surrounded by houses and residential buildings, making it totally a full part of the Indian capital. Also known as Arthur Road Jail, the facility is a maximum security prison. Originally, it was intended to hold no more than 1,074 inmates, but like most prisons in the world, it became overcrowded. Nowadays, it's estimated to have over 2,900 incarcerated inmates. The sanitation and medical facilities are too far and not enough for its current population load. A huge number of of inmates don't have access to natural light nor to ventilation, and regardless of multiple plans and proposals to relocate the inmates into a newly built jail, eight new barracks were added in order to increase the capacity by 200 inmates more. Holding famous Bollywood actors charged for illegal arms possession, international terrorists, organized crime leaders, and famous businessmen, this overcrowded melting pot led to multiple territorial wars inside the prison, like in 2006 when inmates affiliated with with the notorious Dawood Ibrahim's gang confronted other inmates belonging to a major Mumbai crime syndicate, which led authorities to start separating prisoners based on their gang affiliations to avoid bigger clashes. Number 18. Ciudad Berrios Prison, El Salvador the Ciudad Barrios Prison is located in the capital of El Salvador, San Salvador. Like most prisons in the world, it is overcrowded. It was originally built for a capacity of 800 inmates, but currently it houses over 2,500 prisoners. However, unlike most prisons, this one is exclusively filled with Mara Salvatrucha gang members. The MS-13 gang has the reputation of being one of the deadliest gangs in the world. The gang was originally founded in the 80s in Los Angeles by a few Salvadoran immigrants. They were exiled in the USA after fleeing the civil war that lasted over a decade. Once the war ended in 1992, they came back to their country, bringing with them the gang culture. Most of the inmates in Ciudad Barrios are drug lords, murderers, and weapon dealers for the MS-13 gang. The Mara Salvatrucha gang is so feared in El Salvador that they were left to run the prison by themselves and establish their own rules. Prison guards and the army guarded from the 
the outside, making sure nobody comes out, but they don't really interfere with what happens inside the prison. And inside, the gang members and leaders run their own society. They even have their own bakery, hospital, rehab centers, and workshops where they build toys, but also their own furniture. Number 17. Camp 22, North Korea. Taking advantage of the lack of international pressure and the slow digitalization of the country, human rights in North Korean prisons are totally non-existent. So unfortunately, it's safe to say that North Korean prisons can easily be more categorized as forced labor camps than prisons, which also means that it makes it much more complicated and near impossible to escape such prisons. One of them, and one of the most guarded, is Camp 22. Totally isolated from the outside world, the camp is located in the northwest in Horyong County, near the border with China. Camp 22 was founded in the 1960s and, from the beginning, was meant mainly for political dissidents and their families. The 225 square kilometer camp was estimated in the 1990s to hold over 50,000 people inside. It's divided into several different quarters, including a coal mine with a mining section, a farming area, and also an execution block. The camp is naturally surrounded by mountains that go from 400 to 700 meters high. It's protected by a 3,300 volt electrical fence, barbed wire fences, and hidden traps all over the space between the two fences. The camp is managed by around 1,000 guards and 600 administrative personnel. The guards are equipped with automatic rifles, machine guns, hand grenades, whips, and trained dogs. Number 16. Kamidi Maximum Security Prison, Kenya The Kamidi Maximum Security Prison is located around 80 kilometers west of Kenya's capital, Nairobi. Geographically, the country is located between Somalia and South Sudan, two neighbors that have been dealing with terrorism and armed piracy threats for the last decades. Despite being built on a relatively small-sized land of 4.9 square kilometers, the Kamidi prison was originally intended to hold around 1,400 inmates, although it's currently estimated to hold over 3,600 prisoners. Built in the 50s, the Kamidi prison is considered the largest of the 10 maximum security facilities in Kenya. Behind its tall and thick concrete walls, murderers, sex offenders, pirates, and terrorists are being held there, and many executions took place there. The Kamidi prison is the most dreadful and terrifying in Kenya. From one side, the inmates have to live in very poor conditions, like having to carry buckets of water since there's no stable running water most of the time. And from the other side, the inmates manage to build a network of drug and phone smuggling, phones that the inmates were recently discovered using to run scams with from inside the prison. Although officials denied such activities, they've recently decided to increase the facility's security by installing a new biometric security system along with new CCTV cameras, even in the cells. Number 15. Bang Kwang Prison, Bangkok, Thailand. Ironically named by the West the Bangkok Hilton Prison, Bang Kwang Prison is also named the Big Tiger in Asian popular culture since it's well known to completely devour the inmates' hopes and lives. Built in the early 1930s, it was originally envisioned by King Rama V to be the home of the worst murderers and criminals. The chances of survival are almost as thin as the chances of escaping from this prison. Inmates get one meal a day, a bowl of rice and soup. To get more food or to just to get some food, inmates need to arrange payments with the cantina. Located in the outskirts of Bangkok, it was built for 3,500 inmates originally. Currently, it houses over 8,000 inmates. Most of them are facing 25 to life. In 2012, the death penalty by shooting was abolished, but replaced with lethal injections. From day one, inmates get iron shackles attached and locked to their legs. The new prisoners have to wear them during their first three months, but those who are facing death row will keep the shackles until the end of their sentence. Although it's no longer applied for the new inmates since 2013, it's still applicable to those on death row, which means 10% of the total number of prisoners. Number 14. HMP Belmarsh, UK her Majesty's Prison, Belmarsh, still keeps its record of escapees to zero since it first opened in 1991. Built on a former naval arsenal in Woolwich, East London, it is one of the three high-security prisons in England and still considered as one of the most secure prisons in the United Kingdom. 
It's meant to hold 910 of the highest profile cases, mostly having to do with national security threats. Within the high security prison itself, there's a special area with even more increased security and 48 special single cells. The high security unit is holding prisoners with high risk of escaping, terrorists still considered a national security threat, and high profiles most likely to keep conducting organized crimes from within the prison. To ensure high security levels, 40% of the cells in the HMP Belmarsh can hold only one prisoner at a time. The other 60% of the cells were meant for two inmates. However, most of the multi-occupancy cells currently have three inmates. Right after 2001, HMP Belmarsh earned the nickname of Britain's Guantanamo Bay by the media and the public. This was because it appeared that it was holding suspects to be allegedly linked with terrorist activities, but without any charges or trials. IRA prisoners, KGB agents, Al-Qaeda terrorists, but also Julian Assange are among the detainees there. Number 13. The Penitentiary of New Mexico, PNM, USA Built in 1885 in Santa Fe County, the PNM is the only maximum security prison in New Mexico. The PNM has five max security blocks built for 790 men of the highest security classification of New Mexico criminals. Even though the death penalty was repealed in 2009, from the beginning all New Mexico death rows are in the level 6 supermax area. Throughout the years, the penitentiary has seen the most violent riots in the history of U.S. prisons. Many believe its history made it a haunted place, especially after various witnesses reported doors opening and closing on their own, ghostly voices and footsteps, and other unexplained events. In 1922, one inmate was killed and five injured after being shot by the tower guards. Inmates were refusing to go back to their cells in a protest against the poor food and the use of excessive force by the guards. In 1953, the inmates again protested against the excessive use of force and held the deputy warden and 12 guards hostage. Two prisoners were killed by the guards then, and it led to the demolition of the original main block a few years later. In 1980, a two-day riot resulted in the death of 33 inmates. Some were horrifically butchered and dismembered, others were decapitated and even burned alive. Number 12. Rikers Island Prison Situated on Rikers Island between Queens and the Bronx, Rikers Island Prison is New York's main prison. Built in 1932, it's estimated to currently be the residence of a daily average of 10,000 inmates. Over 85% of them are actually awaiting trial and haven't been convicted yet, which also means that many of the inmates are there for nonviolent crimes and or are still awaiting bail. Despite a yearly budget of $860 million, the facilities are in horrific conditions, according to 14 local lawmakers that recently visited the premises. Shower stalls used as cells, fecal matter and urine on the floor, and dead cockroaches next to rotten food in the hallways. They even witnessed an inmate's suicide attempt during their visit. Rikers Island Prison is considered by many people, including the inmates, as the most dangerous and hope-killing prison in the world. Aceus Johnson, 24, died of what appears to be a drug overdose after telling his family that he sees no way out of Rikers Island. His family insists that the correction officials didn't take Aceus to any of the three court appearances he had, preventing him from paying his $1 bail. According to official reports, 12 inmates died in 2021 inside the prison, and in 2015, 9,424 assaults were reported. Number 11. Mendoza Prison, Argentina the Mendoza Prison is located in the Mendoza Province in the western central part of Argentina and eastward of the Republic of Chile. It was inaugurated in 1905 and kept on being expanded throughout the century. Although its total capacity was always meant for a maximum of 600 prisoners, it easily reached three and four times that number. With records of over 1,600 inmates, the prisoners found themselves sleeping five to one cell on the floor and with no mattresses. The inmates at some point had to defecate in plastic bags and urinate in bottles. 
in the High Security Pavilion 5, 90 of the considered most dangerous inmates were living there. Allegedly, they were that dangerous to the point that even the guards didn't want to come into Pavilion 5. They were leaving the inmates' food at a safe distance in the corridors. The meals were often left to rot on the floor for days. From one side, the guards accused the inmates of violence and the lack of means, and from the other, the inmates accused the horrific detention conditions and the multiple beatings they suffer from the guards. In 2005, 14 inmates sewed their mouths shut as a form of protest, which got Amnesty International's attention, who judged the detention conditions as horrific and inhumane. Number 10. San Quentin Prison, USA San Quentin Prison is a state prison for men located north of San Francisco in Marin County. Inaugurated in July 1852, it is, to this day, the oldest prison in California. It's also the largest in the United States and the only death row for male inmates. It's referred to as the arena by the prisoners. It's equipped with a gas chamber, but starting in 1996, all executions are now delivered through lethal injection, and the last carried out execution dates back to 2006. In 2005, the court ordered a report, and it was discovered that the prison was old, antiquated, dirty, poorly staffed, poorly maintained, with inadequate medical space and equipment, and overcrowded. Later that year, the warden was fired for threatening a doctor with disciplinary action as he spoke with attorneys about problems with healthcare delivery at the prison. But San Quentin State Prison has quite the story with death row inmates and serial killers, with 33 executions carried out until 2006 and 15 death row inmates that were either killed or committed suicide. Currently, it holds at least 62 known serial killers. 55 inmates more have either died of a natural death or have been transferred, and 12 died recently following the outbreak of COVID-19 in 2020. Number 9. Antony Mora Prison, Madagascar Antani Mora Prison is also known as the Central Prison of Antani Mora, and it's officially called Maisan Centrale Antani Mora. Located in Antananarivo, the capital of Madagascar, it holds a maximum of 800 inmates. In 2019, it was reported that more than 4,000 detainees were being held there. Many of them are still awaiting trial. It's so overcrowded that during nights, prisoners are jammed like sardines in a can, and turning over is only allowed on command. This prison is one of the last known homes to the plague, the Black Death that ravaged Europe and the world during the 14th century. Its lack of hygiene has been criticized by international organizations. More than 50% of the inmates are yet to be convicted, and the population is counted manually. The logistics system is antiquated, if not non-existent. It houses men, women, and children. The prison is separated in blocks and provides one meal per day of just boiled cassava. A U.S. human rights report found that chronic malnutrition is the leading cause of death among prisoners in Madagascar and that the condition affects up to two-thirds of the inmate. The prisoners share the facility with rats, fleas, cockroaches, and all kinds of pest-spreading vermin. It is a nightmare of hygiene, security, safety, and health. Number 8. Butyrka Prison, Russia the Butyrskaya Prison, aka the Butyrka Prison, is located in a very central district in Moscow. Although it's believed that the prison was built in 1771, it started to take its current shape from around 1879. And it's safe to say that even nowadays, it is still considered Moscow's largest prison. Right before the 1980s Moscow Olympics, authorities wanted to deflect the visitors' attention from the prison, so they built an apartment building all around it. But the fortress still made itself felt and seen in the neighborhood, which consequently made it easier for the inmates in the women's section to hit on the men walking by that area. Each year, over 30,000 convicts transit through the penitentiary. And throughout the centuries, many historically notable inmates have made the guest list of the penitentiary. From CSKA Moscow football players recently to political dissidents, human rights advocates, poets, filmmakers, and even Hitler's favorite nephew, Heinrich Hitler, who was captured in 1942 while trying to retrieve radio equipment from a Soviet army post. 
Originally, cells were meant to hold up to 10 inmates, but it's currently estimated that each cell has an average of 100 people. For a long time, overcrowding isn't Butyrka's only problem, but also health issues associated particularly with the spread of diseases like tuberculosis and HIV. Number 7. Caranjiru Penitentiary, Brazil Caranjiru Penitentiary, officially Casa de Detenção de São Paulo, alternatively São Paulo House of Detention, was a prison located in São Paulo, Brazil. The prison was designed and built by Samuel Jas Neves in 1920, when it was still considered a model prison designed to uphold the new standards of the criminal code that was reviewed in 1890. It operated from 1956 for a total of 46 years. At its peak, it became South America's largest penitentiary, housing over 8,000 inmates. Inmates. In 1992, it was the site of the Karanjiru Massacre, where military police stormed the penitentiary after a prison riot. The massacre left 111 dead prisoners. Trauzio Varela, a noted Brazilian physician, volunteered as an unpaid physician in Karanjiru from 1989 to 2001, in particular to address its AIDS epidemic. He wrote a book, Karanjiru Station, describing his own experiences there and the dreadful conditions of the inmates. The book was later made into a movie, Kerenjiru, released in 2003. Both were highly regarded by critics and the public. The prison was demolished on December 8, 2002. One block was left intact to be used as a museum, now open to the public and accessible via Kerenjiru metro station. Today, the ancient site of the old penitentiary left its place to Parque da Juventude complex. Number 6. La Sante Prison, Paris, France the Sante Prison was built in 1867 and was meant to keep around 500 people enclosed. But despite being located within the French capital of Paris, it got renovated a few times in order to increase its capacity from 500 to 2,000 inmates. Public executions by guillotine were held outside the prison walls until it got banned in 1939. Up until a few years ago, La Sante blocks were drastically racially segregated based on the inmates' parents' origins. There were four blocks, and they called them the West Europeans block, the Black Africans block, the North Africans block, and the rest of the world block. For a long time, La Sante's suicide rate was up to seven times higher than the rest of the prisons in France. With a record high of 124 suicides in 1999 versus 24 in California that same year, La Sante prison gained the reputation of being a hopelessly violent and ruthless place. If you want a psychologist to give you drugs, they send you right away, said an inmate to a journalist during a visit. They dope us up to keep us quiet. But if you need a dentist, you have to wait a month. Wow, I mean, that sounds almost like a Shutter Island scenario, right? Number 5. The Maracaibo National, Venezuela the Maracaibo National Prison, also known as Sabaneta Prison, was a notoriously violent prison in the city of Maracaibo, Venezuela. It is allegedly under the legislation of the Ministry of Prison Systems, most recently under Minister Iris Varela from 1958 to 2013. But the truth is, like many other Venezuelan prisons, it's more of a state within a state with an independent tribunal, caste system, rules, laws, economy, and even currency. It was severely overcrowded with inadequate access to medical care, food, and clean water. Violence among prisoners was common. Until a kingpin took over, gangs of inmates had control over the prison and were led by a pran, or inmate leader. The prison was closed after 55 years of operation due to government intervention and is now being converted into a museum. It witnessed the rise and falls of many local tyrants, riots, and raids by government forces. The unrest was constant under the rule of the government, with authorities claiming it to be gang violence among prisoners. Mocho Edwin was the pran in Maracaibo Prison at the prison's closing. He was first incarcerated in 2006, but was soon after released in 2007. Since then, he was sent to Maracaibo for committing triple homicide. Edwin was known for drug sales and prostitution throughout the prison and connections with the outside world. Number 4. ADX Florence Supermax Facility, USA 
the United States Penitentiary Administrative Maximum Facility, informally known as USP Florence Admax, is an American federal prison in Fremont County near Florence, Colorado. It is under the jurisdiction of the United States Department of Justice. In 1983, when Thomas Silverstein and Clayton Fontaine, members of the Aryan Brotherhood, stabbed to death two correctional officers at the USP Marion, Illinois, the director of the Federal Bureau of Prisons blamed the stabbings on inadequate prison design. The director believed in the need of the creation of a new facility that keeps isolated the prisoners most capable of extreme, sustained violence towards staff or other inmates, which led him to supervise the USP Marion under total lockdown for two decades. This experience served as a model for the creation of the facility in Florence. USP ADX Florence opened in 1994 and is classified as a supermax or control unit prison. It provides a higher, more controlled level of custody than a maximum security prison. The institution is unofficially known as the Alcatraz of the Rockies. The number of inmates at the facility has significantly declined. Following the Prison Rape Elimination Act audit in early 2021, two housing units are no longer operating due to a low population. The facility is currently undercrowded with 345 inmates and a maximum capacity of 551. Number 3. Tadmore Prison, Syria Tadmore Prison was located in Palmyra in the deserts of eastern Syria, approximately 200 kilometers northeast of Damascus. The structures were originally built as military barracks by the French Mandate forces. Tadmore was known for harsh conditions, extensive human rights abuse, torture, and summary executions. In 2001, a report was submitted by Amnesty International regarding Tadmore Prison. They called it a source of despair, torture, and degrading treatment. In 2015, it was taken over, then destroyed by militants of the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant, ISIL. During the 1980s, Tadmore Prison housed thousands of Syrian prisoners, both political and criminal. In 1980, it was also the scene of the infamous Tadmore Prison Massacre, a violent episode led by Rifat al-Assad the day after the Syrian branch of the Islamist Muslim Brotherhood narrowly failed in an attempt to assassinate his brother, President Hafez al-Assad. Members of units of the defense brigades under the command of Rifat al-Assad raided Tadmore prison at dawn and slaughtered around a thousand prisoners in the cells and the dormitories. The massacre is well known throughout Syria. Tadmore Prison was closed in 2001, and all remaining inmates were transferred to other Syrian prisons. It was reopened in 2011, and 350 individuals arrested for participation in anti-government demonstrations were transferred there for interrogation and detainment. Number 2. Vladimir Central Prison, Russia Vladimir Prison was established during the Russian Empire in 1783 by decree of Empress Catherine II. It is located about 160 kilometers or 100 miles northeast of Moscow. In 1906, it became known as Vladimir Central and held political prisoners. It is currently the largest prison by capacity in Russia, with a capacity for a maximum of 1,220 detainees. However, it is said to be surpassed by Kresty II, currently under construction in Kolpina, St. Petersburg. At the beginning of 1921, shortly after the rise of the Bolsheviks to power, Vladimir Central became the first of several special purpose prisons intended to house political dissidents. Vladimir Central was later made part of the system of special camps and prisons installed by the USSR Council of Ministers after issuing a special resolution in 1948. The resolution widened the range of political prisoners for the detention in Vladimir, including spies, saboteurs, terrorists, Trotskyites, men Bolsheviks, socialist revolutionaries, anarchists, ethnic nationalists, white immigrants, participants in other anti-Soviet organizations, and those with ties to any anti-Soviet or enemy activities. In service documents, the name of the prison was listed as Vladimir Special Prison MGB of the USSR. After the dissolution of the Soviet Union, the prison was reverted to a regular detention facility. In 1996, a museum about Vladimir Prison was opened on the prison grounds. Number 1. Guantanamo Bay, Cuba 
Guantanamo Bay is a military prison located within Guantanamo Bay Naval Base under the jurisdiction of the USA. It is one of the most controversial and secretive prisons in the world. It's allegedly made to detain terrorists and terrorist suspects. The controversy comes from the fact that the United States does not honor the Geneva Convention. It was established in 2002 by President George W. Bush and his administration following the 9-11 terrorist attacks. Thus, it houses mostly Al-Qaeda and Taliban sympathizers, members, or suspects. Considering its purpose, indefinite detention without trial and torture are common. Every detainee is either or suspected to be a terrorist, hence all means are allowed to extract information regarding the organizations they're a part of. The next president, Barack Obama, promised that Guantanamo Bay would be closed, which found strong opposition from the U.S. Congress. During the mandate of Barack Obama, the number of inmates went from 245 to 41. This step was rendered totally null when Donald Trump signed an executive order to keep the detention camp open indefinitely. Despite the ruckus and controversy surrounding the camp and all the breaches and disdain to basic human rights, as well as the innovations and progress made in the field of torture, authorities still insist that they're keeping a morally upright and humane relation towards the prisoners. As you can see, prisons can sometimes be unfair on their inmates. Now, Granted, they are criminals and deserve to pay for what they've done, but don't you think that the prison system sometimes makes things worse instead of better? What's your opinion on the matter? Tell us about it. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!